overview of the Semantic Spam Manager. So to get started, um, you'll want to click on the link that is provided in the email that came with this video announcement. And it will take you to the Spam Manager login page. To log in, you'll put your full email address and the password that you designated when you got the welcome message. Now, if you did not follow the link in the welcome message or you didn't get the email message at all, you can simply come to this page, click on Forgot Your Password, and um, request a reset. And at that time, you'll get an email sent to you with a reset link. You'll be able to designate a password and then log in. So we're going to log in here. And the first thing you'll notice is the Spam Manager window. There are four tabs for you at the top. The Administration tab is not for you. That's mine, so you won't see it. Summary, Approved Senders, Block Senders, and Options. The summary gives you a list of all the messages that have been deemed spam and therefore quarantine uh, on your behalf. Now things that are obviously spam like uh, blacklisted domains or blacklisted senders, um, IP addresses, things like that, you will never see. Those things will automatically get deleted before they even hit this quarantine. Everything else comes here. So from here, you're able to look and see uh, who sent you. You can actually actually search by um, sender or subject and see um, if you can find an email that you suspect uh, somebody sent you that may have been caught in the spam filter. Um, so in reviewing this, I can look and say, uh, yeah, this is spam. Um, most of it is, but this discovery education one I'm kind of suspicious about. So I'm looking at this and uh, it looks like a typical spam message. Um, and obviously if you look at the subject and the text here um, in the body, you'll see win a trip to the Educational Technology Conference of your choice. Uh, typically that will do it for flagging it as spam. Um, but if you're interested in winning the trip uh, to a place of your choice, you would click on release. Once you click on release, this message is sent to your inbox, out of the quarantine to your inbox. You can also click on delete to just delete it um, or cancel and do nothing. So I'm going to release this one message because I'd like to go to Hawaii and, and hopefully there's a conference there. Um, we'll see. Now, once it's sent and released, it will hit my inbox within a matter of seconds. But before I leave this page, it gives me a choice. Um, do I want to approve the sender from now on? Um, and this sender being discovery education at discovery.com. Or do I want to approve the entire domain, meaning that anybody at discovery.com can send to me? Um, or do I want to do nothing and just continue? I highly recommend if you're going to approve a sender, you always approve the specific email address, not the entire domain. And here's why. Yahoo is the number one spammer in the world. And if you approve yahoo.com, you are approving spam from anyone at Yahoo uh, to come through. So if you approve a particular sender, you're less likely to approve uh, the spam that's going to follow. So always approve the sender, um, never approve the domain. If you do, um, you can always come back here and delete that approval and then that domain will be subject to the spam rules that we have in place. So let's go ahead and approve this sender, discovery education at discovery.com. Um, and this may be one that I actually want to uh, send. Now notice here the real address that it's approving is this. Um, and now we can further see why it was blocked as spam to begin with. So Discovery actually uses a, a spamming service to get these blasts out. So it really didn't come from discovery.com. It came from uh, this other spamming service. So now that I've seen that, I'm going to say, no, the heck with them. We're not going to let that be approved. So I'm going to just cl click on continue. All right. So um, if I want to delete any of these messages, I can select one or more of them 
and I can delete them. Or I can delete all of them. Now, if I delete all of them, you have the choice to uh, confirm or cancel. Once you delete them out of the quarantine, they're gone for good. All right, so in this case, I've reviewed all of these. None of these are worthy of keeping. I'm just going to delete all of them. All right, second tab, approve senders. This is where you would actually manually put in uh, an address of somebody who has sent to you, but for whatever reason gets caught in the spam filter. Um, a family member, a colleague, whatever. Um, but you would only need to add them here if, in fact, you knew from the summary list that they were getting caught. Um, so you could do it in two places, obviously from here when you release it, or you can enter it here. If you are in the habit of releasing messages and adding people um, as approved senders, they will, um, they will go here automatically for you. Block senders is a little bit different. Uh, if somebody is spamming you and it's getting through, instead of picking up the phone and calling us, you can take matters into your own hands. So you can click on Add Entry here. And again, the rule of thumb is always approve or block a specific email address. Try to avoid doing an entire domain because otherwise you're going to block a lot of legitimate email. So I have somebody I'd like to block here. Um, All right, the repo man at mybank.com, an imaginary address, but it's, it works for the example. So I don't want to ever see email from this particular person. I block this sender, I click on save, <coughs> and this message will not only be blocked, it will never show up in my summary or in my quarantine. It will automatically just be dropped. Now, if you make a mistake here, not a problem, you click on it, and you delete the rule you just created, the block senders rule, and now you're back to the original setup. And the same applies here. If you make a mistake with approved senders, you can always delete that rule. The options tab. Notifications are automatically set to be sent out daily only if you have spam in the quarantine. If you don't get notification within a day or two, that means you haven't gotten any quarantine spam. Um, so don't freak out if you go one or two days and you don't get a message. However, some people th don't want to be notified more than once a week. You would check this box and you would say, oh, well, notify me every Thursday. Otherwise, the default is every day only if you have spam. And then you would save that. Uh, manage aliases. If you click on that, you'll see that I have a J clause at schooldistrict100.org, and you will have whoever you are at schooldistrict100.org as well. Um, so our primary email addresses are user at bsd100.org. This is an alias that we uh, allow mail to come through at, and all this means that uh, all this means is if you designate the alias address here, spam coming to either one of those addresses will get caught in this quarantine and you'll be able to manage it under one login. Now, I would not recommend deleting this because then spam um, that may come to this second address um, will not show up in your quarantine and you won't be able to manage it or release it. So leave this as is. All right, and the last bit is the changing of the password. You can put your own spam, the old spam manager password in, a new password twice, click on change, and you'll be uh, set. The, there are some rules here that apply, there's some criteria, make sure you read um, what the criteria is to be successful, and then go ahead and choose a password. And that is the brief overview of Semantic Spam Manager.